Welcome to Young Climber, a show that speaks to young people moving up the economic ladder and making a difference in their communities. Today we speak to Siposetu Claudia Kenenza, who has proven that education can swing you into one direction, but dedication and passion will always come out top. So I promised to tell you that major shift that happened in my life. So last year I started a work from home job. Let me tell you something I learned. Between you and where you want to be is fear. I don't mean it in an intangible subjective kind of way like it's all in your mind. I mean it in a tangible objective way like the actual things stopping you from achieving your goals. I'll share with you some of the fears that I had. I was straight from school, 22, inexperienced. I studied agriculture and this job is virtual. I had never met anyone who has a work from home career. In fact, when I got this role, my mother said she's getting scammed. I am from a third world country and the internet can And when they actually offered me the trial period, the internet was So many times I wanted to write them a message and say, guys, I can't. And with that said, Claudia, welcome to Young Climber. Thank you so much. I am excited to be here. I'm very glad to have you know this is a very interesting talk that we are about to have but firstly to start off with you know we know so much about you on social media but who is the real Claudia before the career choices? Yeah of course so um, I am from Matapa Eteni and Buleni properly popularly known as Mpuleni. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Gwaluseni Infant School for primary and then I went to Swazi National High School um, where I became a prefect, deputy head girl and head girl and I think it played such a huge role in me being such a conscientious and responsible person and then I acquired my high level of education at the University of Eswatini Luyengo campus um, where I studied um, agricultural economics and agribusiness management. Yeah. Yeah, and um, oh, there's been a lot in my journey that led me to sharing a lot about mental health mm -hmm. on social media that I am so excited to be sharing with you today. Alrighty, and now we need to speak about the digression because you did talk about studying agriculture, but then you went a completely different path or parts because you're not only just doing one thing, <laughs> but we will get into that. Um, what uh, motivated this specific role? What, what inspired you to take upon this role? Yeah, of course. So when I went to uni, it was the first time I was away from family. Um, I was raised by a very conservative and street single parent. And when I was at school, I felt like there was sort of a gap between us because she didn't call a lot. She still doesn't call a lot. And I think I probably just want her to be calling me more and more. Mm -hmm. So when I was at school, I felt very isolated at the time. I had a childhood best friend who moved to the UK. I felt very alone and also um, I was nervous. I had so much anxiety. I didn't believe that I could make it throughout university. So I, I also was very confused. I felt like I had an identity crisis. I had existential angst. I was a confused person who felt like I needed guidance and I had a hard time fitting in and making friendships. Then eventually I asked a lot of questions in my mind and I would ask people as well and they'd go like, oh Claudia, you're overthinking. Don't think about those things. Don't yeah. ask them. And I had this nagging feeling inside me and void that said, no, there should be answers. Until eventually I had a friend who noticed that 
I was having issues. <laughs> and they shared yeah. um, a book with me by Eckhart Tolle, The Power of the Now. Mm. And I started reading that book, which oh, it triggered a lot of wounds, but also nursed me and nurtured me back to life. Mm. And oh, I was so shocked to realize that I could be at ease and happy. Yeah. So finding that, I felt like I couldn't heal alone. Yeah. I have to share this. All righty. <laughs> and you know, after being nursed um, by that book, you decided to share yourself with the world. I mean, putting yourself up on social media is such a huge risk. But you know, what is the theme of your role? What do you do specifically? What does a day to day look like for Claudia when you all up in that business because there's so many things that you did you didn't only meet people via social media you no know, virtually you also meet, met them in the physical during your university days of course um when i was at school uh, i was so excited with my journey i went to the student dean yeah. and requested to start a meditations group yeah. which took a little bit of time because of bureaucracy and you know they have to ask for permissions and all of that but i was so persistent and eventually they gave me a room to start a, a small group mm -hmm. and coach people with meditations and it was such a success to the point that um, I was coaching them even individually just helping them so they would come to me for sessions and sort of seek guidance and oh this was so transformative for me because then they would come back with feedback they still come back with feedback like mm -hmm. Claudia you changed my life. I feel yeah. like I'm in a better position. You know, I was interning right now and my boss told me this and this and I know it's because I was applying your advice. Mm -hmm. And, um, but in the background, that takes a lot of work from my end because I have to keep on reading as well. I have mm -hmm. to keep on pouring into myself yes. to be able to, to pour, pour into, into others. others. I have to do lots of research. I took um, a cognitive behavioral therapy course online because you know if, if you if you're gonna help other people you have to be like a source of authority as yeah. well and you don't want to mislead them at the same time so there was all of that involved in the background and then I also had some people approaching me on social media and um, to the point where I eventually had paid clients okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah and yeah it, it was all of that so on a day-to-day -day basis, it includes me listening to podcasts, it includes me taking care of my physical health, mm -hmm. it includes me reading books, it includes me also asking the right questions when I'm interacting with people, mm -hmm. you know, so that I'm also informed as well when helping others. All righty, thank you so much, Claudia, for such insight. Um, you know, we will continue the conversation, but I feel right now we need to take it all in. You're such an interesting um, personality. We will be right back with more of Claudia. <music> Welcome back. We are still with the ever so beautiful and of course intellectually gifted Claudia Geninza. We are discussing, you know, her mental health journey and how she is continuously pouring into other cups. You know, as we move on, Claudia, I just want to get um, your perspective of, you know, this career, being on social media, risking your life basically because you know people have opinions what are some of the things that have encouraged you on social media and of course have discouraged you because you know you you can't have it all as a person um what have been the pros and cons of putting yourself out there yeah um thank you so much tabelo and i'm so glad you get the gist of things when it comes to this yeah. and first of all <laughs> it is such a huge risk because you know you're putting yourself out there to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and it is something that is not very attractive yeah. to to you know to just air your weaknesses like that um i, I was very skeptical about sharing my journey because i, I was in the pits i was at my lowest mm -hmm. and um, sometimes I just feel like I'm even risking embarrassing my friends, you know, because everybody's going to see, oh, she's friends to that and she she's depressed. Oh, my gosh, she's just a somber mood kind of person. <laughs> yeah. um, but I kept on doing it because I just felt the urge that it needs to be done. I was certain deep inside myself that I can't be the only person going through this. Yeah, and certainly. 
I just wanted to lead by example that it's okay. Mm. It happens. Yeah. And there's a way to get better, mm. you know. And I'm so glad I did it. I, I do not regret it. And I feel like I've kind of created a community around myself that understands it and is very supportive and encouraging. Mm -hmm. And I've learned a lot myself. And yeah, doubts still come back from time to time because sometimes you're like, mm. <sighs> Am I really equipped to do this? Am I really mm. equipped to help others? Sometimes I just think to myself that um, maybe someone else looking at me from a distance feels like, who are you to talk about this? Because, you know, you have a parent, you've, you've went to school, you're from basically like from town. What about the kid in love, Misa? Mm. What about the orphan? You know, what are you going to tell them about mental health? Mm. And the truth is people like that will always exist, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't pursue what we think needs to be done. Yeah. So I'm doing it regardless because I feel like I am touching souls somewhere and I know this because I do get the feedback as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, we need to talk about you. Going back a little, you know, you did talk about you have an agricultural educational background and you have the social media real talk with Claudia but you also do have another job. How do you juggle all of this into one? You know, it, it, it mostly says you have three different careers, actually, um, when I look into it, basically. Um, can you tell me why you have chosen to make this one your main one? But the other one is also your main one. But yeah. um, can we speak about your other careers to you climbing so many ladders? <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So um, I work as a relationship manager, right? Mm -hmm. um, I help Western entrepreneurs mm -hmm. source Filipino VAs. So basically, they help them with clerical tasks or sometimes the roles are even specialized. Mm -hmm. And it's all virtually. I work virtually. The Filipino v VAs work virtually. And most, most of my entrepreneurs um, are nomads, which means they travel the world, mm -hmm. but at the same time running their businesses. Yeah. And I love my job so much. And my boss carefully placed me in that role because of my people skills. Yes. So I did the wealth dynamics test and I came out as a star. So stars are basically like people like you and I. <laughs> <laughs> it's the film yeah. people, it's, oh. it's the CEOs, it's the sports people, it's yeah. the CEOs. Um, and uh, the interesting thing is that Oprah is it speculated she speculated to be a star as well and hmm. i was so excited because so she's like my role model <laughs> yeah. same level same level yeah. so i was so perfect for this because i rely on my people skills mm. on on building relationships with people and yeah so um yeah so basically i assist these entrepreneurs from sourcing the va um up until the onboarding process mm -hmm. and supporting them even beyond that yeah. and if there's an opportunity also upsell i love my job because yes. i get to interact with diverse people mm -hmm. and i just love talking to people and asking questions yeah and yeah and then on the side it's the social media where i'm creating videos i'm in front of the so camera this one is a side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because my main, this is my main job that brings in the money. Yes. And then there's this, which mm -hmm. I'm passionate about. Yes, of course. Um, I'm just driven, mm -hmm. both the creating the content and coaching people. It's mm. things I'm passionate about. But yeah. I'm just passionate about everything I'm doing because I think this is where understanding yourself, your strengths come into mm. play. Yeah. If you understand yourself and your strengths, anything you're going to do, even if you have to learn, oh, it's stressful, you're just still going to smash it yeah. and you're going to show up. Yeah. no matter what and now tell me what are you saying about your agricultural side because i see you're not mentioning it in any of these things um you know we had a brief conversation and you were telling me that you're so engaged in the digital world that you feel like you're not going back agriculture is more practical so what are you hoping for the future of your job um are you even hoping to teach emma swati like you know you found something in yourself and then you put it out in the world. Are you hoping that once you learn so much about the job that you're doing to engage other young um, people in Eswatini? 
Okay, for starters, I love agriculture. I need everybody <laughs> to know this. Yes, I love yes. agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, when while studying agriculture, I would come back to my to my mom all the time and like, oh, mommy, I was learning about rabbitry today. We should try rabbits. Oh no, they're not a problem. They're easy. I'm I'm gonna guide you on this. Mm -hmm. And then I learn about piggery. I come back, mom. Piggery is amazing. They no, pigs are not stressful, you know. And now we have, and you know, and before we know it, we have a farm. Yeah. And um, the interesting thing is that um, I took on the piggery project for a while, mm -hmm. and I entered um, the Woman Farmer Foundation competition, mm -hmm. and I won position seven um, at the time. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so I do love agriculture more, especially because I love wholesome food, mm -hmm. and I love that we are so uh, Swazilanders like. Eswatini mm -hmm. is, is, is agriculture based. Yes. I love that for us. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, in terms of transitioning and careers, I, I found something else that I like. And there's so many dreams around this. There's, there's, there's so much I wish to engage a Maswati on. Mm. It's so unfortunate that time and money are just limited resources because yeah. I, I do want to start a meditation center because I feel like it's mm -hmm. essential when we when we come to the mental health yes, part, yes. poverty rates, unemployment rates. But do you rates. feel like we have adapted to the nature of meditation? Um, oh, I feel like we're a, a bit behind when it comes to that. Yeah. I, I see that look people give me when with the person that I am, yeah. meditations and... But then how are you hoping to make a difference when it comes to this? You know, first you have to teach people about something before exactly. they can really get into it. So how are you hoping to change all of that? Yeah, I think posting, posting on social media is the first step mm -hmm. that I've taken. Um, I did try it when I was in uni with the meditations group. Mm -hmm. it, it got a good response mm -hmm. because I think it's younger people yes. and they are more centralized and they're like, mm, I can try it out. It's free. It's mm -hmm. close by. But I think um, social media, it's, it's one of the reasons why I started sharing my journey on social media because yes. I want to bring the awareness to the people. Yes. And most of the time, this is the reaction. She's doing white people stuff. Mm. Guys, it's not white people stuff. Mm. <laughs> We all need it at we the end all of the day. Need it. Yeah. We all need it because doctors' research has proven it time and time again yes. that breath work can literally change how you feel mm. and have so many health benefits. You know, yoga has so many health and physical benefits. Yeah. So it's not a racial thing. It's a human thing. Mm. Hope I make sense. Yeah. And, you know, uh, are there any things that you have found in the career maybe differed from the norm, like what we are used to? I think if someone is going through a, a depressing phase uh, for, for us, technically your first option maybe would be a therapist. And from some of the experiences that you had, do you feel like um, there are like clear differences that... It's, it's a bit far from reality, but it can also assist in a professional way. Yeah. So um, my take when it comes to this, <laughs> I've actually seen a lot of videos of late on TikTok talking about if you were spanked as a kid or if you were crying and you were told not to cry, you need therapy. And sometimes I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical when it comes to those things. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's basically like everything nowadays is like you need therapy. Yeah, yeah. With, for myself. We are fragile. <laughs> we are so we fragile. Are fragile. We, yeah, and, and that's a fact. We, we mm. are becoming such a fragile generation. Yes. Um, there's a book, Cradling Minds of the, Cradling of the American Minds, actually talks about this, mm. that we are protecting people so much nowadays, they'll become so weak. Mm. And all of life is, is hard, is difficult. It, it needs resilient people. It needs you to be anti-fragile. Mm. So I do not necessarily think everything needs therapy. I mean, when you look at the fact that the term post-traumatic disorder, post-traumatic disorder, PTSD, yes. came after World War II mm -hmm. because of the veterans that came from war and they had literal trauma and that yes. they couldn't fit in with other individuals when they came back from war. Mm. Those but people needed therapy. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, they needed therapy. Mm -hmm. So... That is how extreme it was. Yeah. And now somebody nowadays just, I don't I've know, they, they just go through something and then they're like, oh, so traumatized. Now yes. that's a misuse of the word. Yes. You can definitely get sad. They can, you, you can definitely have lows, mm. but not necessarily everything needs therapy. Yes. Sometimes you just need a community of supportive people, of loving people. Yeah. You just need a friend to listen to you. You just need maybe a mentor, a coach, things like that.
not necessarily therapy. Still delving into interesting talks with Claudia. When we come back, it's more of her and, of course, more inspiration. There's so many times in my life that I wouldn't have done something just because of anxiety and because of fear. When I entered the beauty contest, I never thought I'd win. When I went to uni, I never thought I'd make it through to the other side. When I applied for my job, I never thought I'd get it. And when I was offered the trial period, I never thought I'd make it through. Welcome back. We are still on it, unpacking the idea of mental health and of course speaking to someone who is rightful for this topic. It is Claudia G. Um, we're still unpacking mental health and if there's something that I have to ask, you know, you speak so positively um, about this side of you. But are there some things that, you know, you do not like about your career in mental health and, you know, things that you have experienced along the way and what some, what are some of the compromises that you've made to put yourself, you know, in the world? Because you can't be positive every day. I'm sure you're having some bad experiences yourself. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so glad you brought that up because I actually did the big five Personally, I did a test by Jordan Peterson, and I, I scored so well when it comes to industriousness, um, creativeness, um, uh, assertiveness, um, enthusiasm. Yeah. But when it comes to neuroticism, which this is basically the susceptibility towards negative emotions. Oh, so yeah. basically, it was like I am susceptible to negative emotions than 56 people in a room that has 100 people. So I really have to be careful um, when it comes to this because I can easily get sad and depressed. Mm. And um, being aware of this has helped me so much because when I notice those negative emotions creeping in, I just know that I have to keep my mind occupied with productive things and positive things. So it's basically how to deal with bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> but, a, yeah, yeah you have sense. to understand in a sense, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, things that I, uh, don't excite me so much when it comes to this, the journey that I took when it comes to sharing my journey as well, mm -hmm. is the fact that I feel like I sort of have to share my personal journey at the same oh, time, yeah. which means I have to be a little less private, mm. but I feel like it's essential because I'm, I'm not like a psychologist. So in order for me to speak from a place of authority, I have to actually prove to people how I am making it work, yeah. how I'm actually a recovering person and, you know, sharing my journey basically. So you put that out there. Yeah. And then another thing that I feel like I had to compromise a little on is that I'm 23 mm. and I feel like there's so many things that I have to stop myself from doing because it's, I, I, I limit myself in terms of acting my age because yes. now I'm becoming a role model sort of yeah. to other people. Of so I have to keep up with this image, mm. which I appreciate at the same time because it gives me limits. I, I love it. I love it. But at the same time, I'm like, hmm. I Is probably this who I really am? Yeah. <laughs> so I have to find the sweet yeah. spot, the sweet balance. And yeah. I'm trying that, by the way, because mm -hmm. I also do not want to take away the fact that young people can focus on important things and mental health yes. and still be your age. Yes. You, so I'm, I'm trying to find that so balance. So if they find you in the club, it's fine. And you're doing wild things. It's okay. Exactly. And then the next morning you motivate. <laughs> <laughs> next morning I motivate. Yes. So yeah, you should be able to understand that the worst thing is falling on the far end extremes of the spectrum. Yeah. You don't want to be too serious, too on it, mm, too focused. Yeah. You don't want to have too much fun, like be hedonistic. You just want to find the sweet balance. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay. And now speaking of sweet balances, um, what are some of the most crucial um, things someone should possess, you know, to be successful in such a, a career? What kind of person do you have to be? Um, so I'll speak... In, in just in general, um, Jordan Peterson always talks about this purpose. Mm. You have to be driven by something. Yeah. 
have goals. You, you, and this is, this is something that your body craves mm -hmm. in, in the subtlest of ways. Like it, it's in your DNA, it's craving it. There should be something driving you. And then at the same time, there should be something that you are running away from. So what is your worst side like? Mm -hmm. And then um, try to imagine I'm quoting John Peterson's words here. Try to imagine that worst side of you was dominant. How would that version of you look like? Okay. Now that's the model that you are running away from. And then you have your ideal. How is your ideal self like? Mm. In terms of your career, how does it look like? How do you spend your time? The people you st spend time with? And be detailed about it. So you really need to be focused in that sense and have goals that you're pursuing. Because like you said, you are going to have those negative emotions. Yes. But you still got to show up and mm. push it. So when you have purpose, you can push it. And, you know, just lastly, as we close up, this was a very insightful conversation. You know, I wish I had more time with you because there is definitely lots to learn. But, okay, you know, we can catch you on the socials, of course, and find out more about your life and how you are pouring into other people's cups. And, of course, get the motivation that we're seeking to find purpose for our own lives. Um, as we close up, please just... What last, what bit of advice um, do you have for someone who is looking to move into this area? They might be younger than you, maybe 19 in high school, 18 or, yeah, what last bit of ad advice do you have for them? <laughs> I'll always say perspective. Yeah. Shape your perspective. Um, it's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. Um, so, and because it's all in the mind, limitations are in our minds as well. So get rid of those limitations and just push it. If there's a limitation, you're gonna find it along the way. Yeah. And you're most likely gonna find the solution, how to dissolve that limitation. And also, it's, it's important to be self-aware. I think self-development and self-awareness played such a crucial role in my journey. Um, it's, 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 it's important to understand how you work, how your brain functions, when you are your optimal self, yeah and environments that allow you to bloom and those things that you need to be in place for you to thrive and create a community and by saying create a community i mean actual physical interactions but i also mean an online community we have so much on 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 social media right now people are pouring out every day make use of that for information for um information to fall back on when you are having doubts because all of that information is on the network so make use of that mm -hmm. all righty thank you so much claudia for sitting and talking with us we really love that and we hope to see more of you in the kingdom of eswatini and in the world thank you so much i had such an amazing time and i hope this is going to help one or two people out there <laughs>